going on everybody it's jimmy perry, perry here from problems from that website your go-to resource for all beginning problems with information and today i'm here to answer five faqs for the bench press um all right let's get right into it oh also i'll link out to the, the page in this article or in this video's description so don't forget to check it out if you want more in-depth understanding of what i'm talking about um also everything i'm saying here is research and sourced from other websites and other like articles and things like that or papers and stuff like that so i'm not a physician but i love to do research and if i'm doing research for myself i would love to share it with everybody else because if you find something someone else you should pay it forward all right let's get right into it first question does the incline bench press carry over to the bench press um it depends on what your sticking points are um the in incline bench press has a focus on the the upper pecs and your shoulders and obviously triceps and stuff like that so yeah, if you're sticking, if your shoulders are your weak point in the bench press, then incline bench may have a carryover. I read somewhere that it takes two weeks in order for any type of um, assistance work to take effect into your actual movement. But yeah, it depends on what your sticking points are. And of course, if you want to get better in a certain movement, the best thing to do is to do the movement. I, however, I am, I love assistance work. You need to bench in order to get better at the bench. So if you need to get better at the flat bench and you're doing a powerlifting move or powerlifting meet, you need to do the bench, do flat bench. Um, but yeah, so it does have some uh, carryover depending on what your sticking points are. So how much does the average 8, 13 year old bench press? Uh, it really depends on the stage in puberty and the size and muscular development. So also, this is just a little tangent I put in there. Uh, your stage in puberty has a direct effect on how much testosterone testosterone you produce. And obviously, I'm not taking this from myself. This is from another site. I linked out to it in that section of the article. So, if you're um, if you if you're not, if you have lower testosterone. You should be stronger, or you should be weaker, and so you, you're not gonna have as much strength. Or I don't know. I don't know exactly what the science is behind it, but basically, higher testosterone levels. The stronger you are, I'm not going to go into it and act like I know exactly what's going on because I don't yet. I'll research it and I'll put it out there for you guys. But basically, 13-year-olds haven't really gone into pu puberty yet, so I wouldn't say that they're that strong. Or not, not that strong, but not as strong as they're going to be. Um, a rule of thumb is that their mass has a direct effect on how, also has a direct effect on how much um, weight you're able to move. So... My thing is, if I'm 160 pounds, and I'm 164.5, I've been losing a lot of weight lately. If I'm 160 pounds, I should be able to bench 160 pounds. So if you're 100 pounds, you should be able to bench 100 pounds. That's just how that goes. And obviously, as you get gain more weight, the strong, you're going to get stronger. Um, is the military press safer than the bench press? Uh, depends on what you mean by safe. You are standing up and loading your spine with the military press. So I wouldn't say that it's safer. It depends on what, like anything can be dangerous. You can be, you can get, be dangerous. You can be in danger with dumbbell movements or like anything, something that's not loaded. It depends on how you play it. And I said play it, you might understand, but it depends on how you do it. Like if you're doing something, if you're loading heavy weights onto something, of course it's dangerous. Of course it can hurt you. So. Would I say that is safer than the bench press? Uh, no, not necessarily. It depends on what how you do it. If you're going crazy, of course you're going to hurt yourself. Possibly. Of course you have the you're putting yourself in a compromising position, and you have the possibility of hurting yourself. I'm not going to say you're going to hurt yourself because I wouldn't. I don't think like that, but you have the possibility. Um, can the floor press uh, floor press replace the bench press for chest workout? Um, I put a few benefits of the bench press and the floor press in the art, um in the uh, article. So for one, you have no leg drive; it's a pure upper body movement and puts the emphasis on your pressing muscles. So in here it says in the research I said or found says that uh it can, but you just won't be able to lift as much weight because you don't have leg drive and a few other things. Um. Yeah, it depends on what you want. If you want to lift a lot of weight, then I wouldn't say necessarily that you will. <laughs> um, is the bar weight included in total bench rest weight? Of course, so you're, you're not, it's not like you won't be moving the bar. So not trying to be sarcastic. It's just the truth. Of course, it does. It's included. <laughs> and then does bench pressing slow your growth? <clears throat> that is actually for the next video, but... No, I don't think so. I'm going to talk about that more in the... No, I would say no, actually. But I'm going to talk about that more in the next video. All right, guys. That was five FAQs for the bench press. Um, if you have any questions, don't forget to com comment them under the article or send me an email. The email is on the site, but I will also put that under the article. And, yeah, you'll hear from me next time. Peace. Oh, don't forget to like subscribe. Peace.